<laughs> yeah, you are damn right that I've got a big smile on my face. I've just watched Manchester United totally control a game of football. I've just seen Sofian Amrabat come in and make a superb debut. I've seen Casemiro brushing the cobwebs off. I've seen United score three. I've seen United in total cruise control, just like we should be at Old Trafford. We, we rarely are, but we were tonight. Beating Burnley was all about just getting the win after the rut that the club was in. We got the win and we built on that tonight. Eric Ten Hag made changes, rotation, seven changes I think he made. <laughs> Superb overall team performance. I'm not sure you can really fault anybody, but there were certainly standout players. And we have been waiting and waiting and waiting for this man to make his full Manchester United debut. And he made it at left back. <laughs> and he was fantastic. The numbers speak for themselves. And Rabat, I said that he's going to be that sort of midfielder who comes in and he has like 93% pass accuracy. 96% there tonight. 92 touches on the ball. That's like four, four McTominays in one game. And Rabat was everything that I hoped he would be tonight. Always made himself available for the ball. And that is such a key position that Manchester United simply just haven't had in terms of an individual profiled player. McTominay hides from the ball. Casemiro, a little bit too far up a lot of the time. He played fantastic tonight. But I'll tell you what, Amrabat being in the team, I think, was a big part of that. Oh, my God. This is the player that we've been missing. This is the player that Eric Ten Hag has been missing. Now, Crystal Palace sat off us. Yes, they did. Will it be harder against tougher opposition? Yes, it will be. Will I take that as Amrabat's full debut, even at left back? Every time we went forward, he drifted in the middle. Always made himself available for the pass. Lovely little diagonals across. Mwah. Mm, bueno. And Casemiro. Who had Casemiro down as our top scorer this season? Because I didn't. I don't know how many goals he's got now. Ridiculous amount of goals. And assists. He's got a goal and assist there tonight. But Casemiro just looked, I tell you what, a lot more comfortable. And I think Amrabat's presence in that team was a big part of that. I think Casemiro this season is going to, it feels like we're going to see a different version of Casemiro. Like an evolution, if you want to call it. Or maybe just a quick change in his style. I think he's going to be more towards a proper box-to-box -box midfielder. At Real Madrid, he made a career out of being the piano carrier, as Fred called it, for Cruz and Modric. At Manchester United last season, he came in and he was kind of like an all-purpose midfielder. Some brilliant defensive tackles also going forward, getting a couple of goals. He was a bit of everything. Couldn't do this this year because the system had too much space with Mount and Bruno further ahead. By the way, Bruno, Fernandes got rested. Can we all just take a moment there to understand that Bruno's just been rested completely and we, and we scored three goals. It looked fantastic. It's great to see Bruno getting a rest. Back to Casemiro. I think with Amrabat in the team, who can now do all the dirty work, clean up in the transitions when we lose the ball. Casemiro doesn't have the legs to track back there anymore. Amrabat does. That's going to be a big difference. I think that's the boy. I know that. It's the best we've seen Casemiro this season. But just seeing those two in midfield, Amrabat doing what he needed to do, Casemiro, and as I said, it wasn't even midfield. It was a left back. Goes to show how immediately tactically aware Amrabat is to the Ten Hag style and system. Just dropped in there, played as the inverted fullback, never out of position, always made himself available on the ball, went long when he needed to. You can tell that he's played for Ten Hag before. And it means that the adaption to the system will not be as long as other players took. And Casemiro, more of that. Those two together, get Bruno in front of him, as Amrabat as the deepest midfielder, Casemiro just in front, and then Bruno as the number 10. That there is, by some margin, the best Balanced midfield that Manchester United would have had for some time. I don't even want to care to think about how long ago. And everywhere you look there, there's positives tonight. Eric Ten Hag making seven changes. Casemiro, sorry, not Casemiro. Garnacho, uh, Martial and Pellistri playing up front. Garnacho got that goal. It was a good striker's finish. Diogo Delo, by the way, I was going to mention him a little bit later in the show. I'll mention him now. Diogo Delo, I thought, was fantastic the whole game. Completely the whole game. Causing problems. Got the assist for Garnacho's goal there to start with. But I mean, it was just the overall. He's really taken to the inverted fullback role very, very well. 
really looking good, man. And at a time when wan has now gone out with a big hamstring injury for a couple of months, it seems like Delo is taking his chance again. And Garnacho took his chance there tonight. Got the goal. Kind of a striker's finish. Good positioning in the box. Good cross from Delo, but good awareness. Garnacho made the run. Rifled it in. Nice. And that's all United needed to do, man. That's what Ten Hag has wanted this team to do so often, but we just rarely have. If you score, if you patient build up in the first 20 minutes, get a goal, take your chance, then the other team, either team either, either comes out or you just control it. That's all it was. It was patient. It was easy. It was comfortable. And it allowed things like this to happen, which otherwise would never have been able to happen. Dan Gore coming on to make his senior Manchester United debut at 19, on his 19th birthday. Happy birthday, Dan. Looked not a jot out of place. Dan Gore is a, is a player who really, he's that sort of all, he's, he's a, compa a combative midfielder. And looking at the profile of Amrabat down to Gore, you can see where they slot in. And add, adding the fact that Kobe Main is going to come back too. All of a sudden, our midfield options are looking good. But the fact that Ten Hag was able to give Dan Gore 30 minutes is a testament to how much control Manchester United actually had in that game. Bringing the, bringing the youth in is, is all good and well, right? Hannibal's done brilliantly in these last couple of games. Really, really has. And tonight, again, I mentioned it in the last game about maturity. He was on a yellow card for a lot of that game. You could argue that he was, you know, sailing quite close to the win with a couple of the tackles that he made, but he didn't get sent off. He did a purpose. He did a job and he came off for Van der Beek. Van der Beek playing football for United again. Oh, my God. Fair play to Hannibal. Maturity. But those sort of situations are where you can bring youngsters in. It's the right time. It's the right environment rather than just chucking them in the deep end because you're seeing your senior players aren't doing it. I think that's unfair quite a lot of the time. And sometimes you feel a bit desperate. But I'm just so delighted with what I saw overall. Look, even Martial got a goal. Really, really good goal. Casemiro floated ball to the back post. Martial with the strikers run. And I'll tell you what, probably the finish of the game. Oh, first time, left foot, rifled it into the other, the opposite side netting. Is he going to suck me in again? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't say it didn't work there. Is he going to suck me in again this season in, in, in terms of Am I going to think that Martial's got it for United again? Am I going to sort of allow myself to get emotionally attached to Martial again, only to be left disappointed? I'm probably not, right? I'm just, I'm stepping to the side. I've, I've, I've kind of checked out, but he looked very sharp against Bayern Munich. He scored a really good goal there. Good movement to the back post. Good finish. Maybe. Maybe. I would love to be proven wrong about Martial, but it's always been about fitness with him. You know what it's like. Couple of in couple of decent performances, and then all of a sudden we're back in the same situation again. But after what we've gone through in these last few weeks, two wins in a row. The Burnley game was a gritty win by any means necessary win, and it's exactly what it was. We got the one nil win, great, fantastic, clean sheet. There at Crystal Palace at Old Trafford, a few days later, you're thinking, right, he's going to have to make some changes, or will he? Because Ten Hag never really does. Yes, he will. Seven changes. But i tell you what, that goes to show that the squad has improved. We made seven changes there and we started a pretty good team. We controlled it. Crystal Palace may have left, you know, let us have a lot of the ball. But sometimes United have done that and then we just don't have any sort of attacking impetus. And it just goes left and right and sideways without any threat. We did that 15, 20 minutes, just patiently building. Boom, got the goal. Clinical, great move. United controlled the whole game. When you control a game of football like that, you don't have to sprint around as much. You don't have to use as much energy. So Casemiro playing 90 minutes in that game, on paper you're thinking, as if he's playing 90 minutes in that game. And then you look at it and you go, well, he wasn't really running around that much. He was just controlling the game of football, brushing the dust off. Amrabat controlled the game of football. This is Ten Hag's identity. People keep saying, oh, Ten Hag doesn't have an identity. Yeah, sure. I know exactly what he wants to do. And it's like that. Control the game. Patient build-up. Create the overlaps with the inverted fullbacks. Take your chances. Then when the team comes out towards you, then you can start playing balls over the top. Then, in the last half an hour, if you can, why not? Bring in a young player. Perfect, perfect result there for Manchester United tonight. Positives absolutely everywhere. And I tell you what, after the last few weeks we've had with Arsenal and Brighton and Bayern Munich and Sancho and the takeover and everything that's gone on, it's nice to come out of the other side of it and now we kick on. Crystal Palace, same team, same ground. I hope the same result on Saturday afternoon. Because that there was pretty much exactly how Ten Hag would have wanted it to. And welcome to United Amramat. Yes, please. <laughs>